Hello everyone and welcome to lesson 6-5 and 6-6. For 6-5 we're going to look at discount and markup. A discount is when the price is dropped by a certain percentage or a fraction of the price and a markup is also when it's marked up when it's increased. For example here we find the selling price if a store pays okay so find the selling price if a store pays $37 for a video game and the markup is 25%. So the store buys the game for $37 and it's going to sell it for an additional 25%. That's called the markup. Okay? So how much should the store uh, sell it for if they want to make 25% profit? So what we do is we find what 25% of this uh, value is and we add it to it. Now we don't have to do it like that. You see, they find what 25% is by multiplying that number times this fraction of a number, times this decimal. And we find that it's 925. And then they want to add 37 plus the 925 to get it. There's a better way to do it. We know that we have $37, and we multiply it, we, and it's going to be an increase of 25%. So we have our decimal 25, but we know this is how much we're going to increase it by added to this. So why not multiply this number times 1, so that we have this number already included. So 37 times 1 is 37. That way we don't have to include it here where it's being added. 37 times 1 is 37. And 37 times decimal 25 will be our 925 that we have to um, add to this 37. But we, are, we already have it because we've already multiplied it. So by multiplying it times 1.25, we're going to get our total value, which will be our 46.25. Okay? So if it's a markup, I would always say put the 1, put a 1 in the 1's place so that you include already your original number and uh, the decimal will include the 925 or whatever fraction you need to add to the final answer. So if we were to look at the questions we have for homework, let's look at 36. Tennis shoes, um, here we have a percent for markup, 20 shoes, 85, oh and this is a 20% discount, well we're not doing discount yet, we're doing markup. Let's do, let's do number uh, 37. Portable MP3 player, $150 with 36% markup. Again, let me move this to the side right there so that I have my $150 times 1.36. See that? The 36 um, is percent, but we convert it into a decimal, which would be that, and this would be the 0 decimal 36. But I'm including the 1 there so that I can include my 150 already. So that I know that uh, 150 times 1 is already 150. 150 times decimal 36 will be 36% 36 of 150 already included with the 150. Okay, I hope that makes sense to you. And when you multiply it, you should get $204. And that's the answer for number 37. Okay. Felicia, example number 9. Felicia got a 20% discount at a spa. Okay, 20% discount. That's great. That means she paid 80% of the price. She didn't pay the full 100% because she got 20% off. Okay, discount. She paid $92. $92 is... $92 is only 80% of the price. 80%, that's right, that's a fraction. 80, 80%, 80%, okay, 80%, there it is, as a fraction. So she paid 80%, 92 is 80%, she didn't pay the full 100, see, they're telling us she got 20% off, so she only paid 80%. And we want to find what the regular price is. What is the regular price? Let's put that as R, regular. Okay, this is where we do cross product, remember? so. We can also simplify it so that we have a simpler uh, multiplication. We can take a zero out of here and a zero out of there, right? And if we really wanted to, we can simplify that fraction to um, the top could be four and the bottom could be five. Yeah, so four fifth. So now that you're only multiplying 92 times five and R times four, and you'll have. 92 times 5 and 4 times r, 92 times 5 equals 4r, and 92 times 5 is 460, I believe, 460 um, equals 4r. You want to um, divide uh, 4 out of both sides so that you have your um, r isolated, so it will divide the 4 out of there and the 4 out of here, and I will have r equals 115. Okay, if I went a little too fast there for you, please make sure to watch it over again. This is the beautiful thing about a video. You can pause and rewind. 
Okay, I believe you're now ready to do uh, these questions. Notice that you have discounts and you have markups. We already did the markup. If you want, we can try the 36 where we have a discount. So tennis shoes, here we have um, tennis shoes are $85 with so 20%, 24% discount. If it's a 24% discount, what percent did you pay? Tennis shoes, $85 and 24% discount. 24% discount. So that means you have to pay 76%, right? But 85 is not the set, it's not the discount. They're saying that the, the shoes cost 85 and you get 25%, 24%. Okay, so 75 is our whole our total price. I'm going to write my 75 on the bottom because that's my whole price and I'm looking for the discount, right? Um, and I know that uh, I'm going to look for my 85 is my 100%. You see that? My 85 is 100% and I'm looking for 76%. And the reason I write 76% is because I want to know what 76% of 85 is because I got 24% discount and that will be my price, okay, my discounted price. Now you can go ahead and do cross product or another way you could do it could be you take your 85, right, 85 and you multiply that 85 times uh, 0 decimal 24, right, that's going to give you your discount your discount your discount not discounted price the discount you can take that discount later and subtract it from 85 if I multiply 85 times decimal 24 I will get uh, 20 decimal 4 that's my discount now I still have to subtract I have to take an additional step and subtract this amount from 85 and that'll be the price that I'm looking for Okay, we're not looking for the discount, we're looking for the price. But why not do it cross-reference, cross-product? Remember, you can always simplify this fraction so that it's easier when you're multiplying. Okay, go ahead and do 36 all the way down to 44. There you have it. Okay, continuing on with lesson 6-6, -6, simple and compound interest. This lesson, uh, for more uh, information, you can reference the lesson on page 281 to 285. Example 10. Find the simple interest rate for $2,500 or $2,500 invested at 3.85% for four years. Let's use the formula interest equals principal times uh, rate times time. Okay, here it is. Interest equals principal. Now the principal is the amount of money invested and borrowed and we said that it was $2,500, right? So P is going to be 2,500, correct? And the rate is our interest rate, but we have to write it as a decimal, okay? And it was 3.85, I believe. Yes, but we have to write this as a decimal. I know it already has a decimal, but it's still in percent form. So we have to change it, move it over twice to the left. So it's going to be uh, times, I'm going to put it in parentheses, zero decimal, oh, Yes, 0 decimal 0, 3, 8, 5. That's really what we're multiplying at time. And then times time, time in, in years. And sometimes it might be months, so we have to write it as a fraction. Uh, how long does it say? Okay, it says times 4 years right there. So then that will also get multiplied times 4. And that, boys and girls, will give us our interest. I hope you can see this clearly right there. That is really what we've done. We've replaced all of these variables with the amount they've given us, and that's going to give us our simple interest, okay? our interest uh, that we earn on this amount at this rate for this amount of time. So there it is. Now this should make more sense to you. You have $2,500 in uh, at the rate of 3.85, but remember we moved the decimal over one, two times over to convert it into a decimal. This is a percent times four years when we do that we have three hundred eighty five dollars and this is our interest rate that we will earn so if you add this to this amount you will have after four years you will have uh, two thousand eight hundred eighty five right because you add it together eight thousand eight hundred five so the simple interest is three hundred eighty five dollars that's how much money you made okay now this is not compound compound is different than simple interest because as the amount is increasing year by year, right, after one year you would have one fourth of this, only one year because it's four years, then you, that interest changes, the, the number should change because now uh, you're adding it to a, a greater amount than 2,500, okay? This would be after four years, but compound is different, boys and girls. And I will explain that in the next example. 
You see that in for number 45 and number 46, you just have to find the simple interest. So here is your principal, your interest, remember to turn this into a decimal by dividing it by 100 for seven years. Go ahead and use the formula to solve those two. And after you watch all the examples, remember that you have to solve all of these. So let me briefly explain what compound interest means. We have the, these numbers. We had our principal at 2,500, our rate at 3.85%, which is 0.0385, and our time was four years. Now, compound means, for example, this four years is going to slowly be adding this amount of interest to this amount. Let's say after one year only, only after one year, it would be um, this amount. The, the interest rate you would build, you would build only after one year, you would actually get, let me, let me just make that side note over here, you would make $96.25, right? $96.25 at this interest rate for this amount, okay? For only one year. This is only one year. We already established that four years would be uh, $385, yes? But at one year. So really, after one year, this amount would go up to interest is $2,596.25. I've added this amount to uh, this amount, okay? Now, we're building 3.85% onto this amount instead of this amount. That's what we mean by compound. As this amount is slowly increasing because of this interest rate, okay, we continue now this amount, this percent will be uh, will be added to this amount as time goes on. After another year, you'll have another one of these on there. So now, so compound essentially means that as the number is increasing, we have to use, we have to find the interest rate for the new increased amount. So really, compound interest is much better than simple, simple interest. And that's what it means. So after one year, it would be this. So we would have to find 3.5. 8.5%, 3.85% of this instead of this. And then the next year, it would be another $96.25, and the third year, another $96.25, and so on. So the amount is actually higher.